Welcome to another for special interviews here at the Government Information Service. I am Sherry and Noel. We are on location at the St. Lucia Room of the Radisson Resort um, to speak with Alberto Vani Dakarafi. He is the Special Envoy for the Caribbean Countries from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Italy. He is in Grenada as one of the representatives at the second EU Caribbean Global Gateway Conference on Sargassum. Uh, Mr. Dakarifi, yes. it's a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Before we get into the meat of the matter as it relates to the whole issue of sargassum and its impact on the region, um, can you just share with us a little background on yourself and your role as the special envoy to Caribbean countries? Okay. Um, what I can say is that Italy has always had uh, deep relations with the Caribbean countries. But then 10 years ago, we decided to establish a new figure. Uh, the one I have as a special representative or special envoy for the Caribbean countries. And since then, we had uh, a few uh, special envoys that came to the Caribbean. And I was uh, named special envoy uh, two years ago. And I came to the Caribbean three times now. Uh, and the issue is uh, exactly to um, deepen relations with each and all of the Caribbean countries within uh, regional uh, organizations like CARICOM uh, or with uh, each of the countries bilaterally. So um, uh, the issue here is to try to uh, create uh, the, uh, the the sense of closeness that we uh, need to have with the Caribbean countries um, on uh, political issues, on economical issues, social, um, so that uh, our feeling of being friends okay. and brothers of this difficult world uh, with the climate change coming in, with the crisis a little bit all over, um, to share our, uh, say, values of uh, uh, freedom, uh, liberty, democracy, um, and to try to make this uh, relation uh, for an objective of prosperous development of this area of the countries, uh, of the Caribbeans. Uh, with the experience we have, I want to share the experience we have, that we built uh, in the years. Uh, and I think that there are lots of things that we can share, uh, not just on uh, economic rules, like we are pertaining to the European Union, uh, and we made the best uh, in 70 years. We didn't have any kind of crisis. That's minor ones, okay. but not bigger ones. Uh, and this is uh, a success for the European Union. Then we have the same rules. Uh, some laws that come from Brussels are directly connected to the laws of each of the countries. So whenever we decide um, that an issue has the importance to be treated in Brussels, uh, that matter becomes and belongs to all the other countries immediately, let's say, once the law is formed. Uh, so this is uh, very important for a few countries that want to be in the same area and want to uh, develop. In that sense, it's very important to share some uh, uh, actions okay. and uh, to uh, share activities, like, for instance, is the Sagasum mission. Before we go further, um, can you just share with us some of the focus areas that you have dealt with within the past two years since taking up that position as the special envoy? Yeah. Um, well, once I've been nom nominated special envoy, I understood that we had to uh, keep an eye on the issues that most in that are most interesting for one part of the Atlantic and the other. And that is science and technology. Okay. In uh, in uh, in that sense, uh, I try to make uh, the people from the science and technology system in Trieste. We have a uh, hundred of uh, uh, international scientific institutions based in Trieste. Uh, some of them directly connected with UNESCO. 
like for instance, ICTP, International Center for Theoretical Physics, uh, ICGAB for genetic um, uh, biote biotechnology, uh, TWAS, which is the uh, Trans World Academy of Science, which is very um, uh, uh, interested in giving, um, I wouldn't say lessons, but, uh, you know, to try to keep the interest on all the matters of science and technology, climate change, sustainable development um, for the Caribbean countries. So how, how does your office facilitate such in terms of ensuring, because you said you work closely with CARICOM and so, and what you just mentioned in terms of science and technology, I do know that in particular our Prime Minister and other members of the CARICOM com community they are very high in terms of science and technology because the the global village now is technologically driven. Yes. So how from your office can our small island states benefit in terms of improvement, in terms of the education, getting the right skill sets to fit into the global market as we speak science and technology? Yes. <laughs> well, first of all, you have to find those sectors which are best placed for a training program. And I found that climate change and sustainable development are the two that are most important for these countries, for the countries in the Caribbean, and for Italy and for the European Union. Climate change is a global issue. Sustainable development is not just local, it's a global issue. Uh, and uh, what I try to do, what my ministry tries to do, is to give some funds for the system of Trieste, scientific and technological system, to put it into a training program. And in fact, on August this year, we put 150,000 euros for a training program for the, for the countries of the Caribbean. Um, actually, we do that, and we uh, have close relations with some universities, uh, the University of West Indies, for instance, Jamaica. I think they they have it. I mean, they have it. You have it in it, Barbados. That's right. Uh, some other islands, some Vincent and Grenadines, and so on. Trinidad, 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 Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and I developed. Um, friendship with the University of West Indies in Jamaica and in Barbados. The other thing that uh, uh, I believe very much in is to share information and to circulate this information. So we have the University of Trieste. I picked the University of Trieste because it's in the center of the Trieste system for science and technology. So everything is connected there. University, programs, the institutions and the university, the academy. Um, within uh, the Academy of Trieste, within the University of Trieste, we have the connections with all other universities in Italy. And uh, one which is very active internationally is the University of Bologna. Uh, but there are others. So I'm trying to push all this system of uh, universities and institutions, science and uh, scientific and technological institutions, to be closer to the Caribbean countries on those sectors I've mentioned, climate change, sustainable development. Because I believe that uh, the answer for the next uh, 10 to 20 years is how do we behave against something that the humankind has created, uh, which is uh, exactly differences on temperature, which are getting very bad into what we are seeing, hurricanes and uh, high seas and everything. So we have to put together all the knowledge we have to share it and to see if there is any um, possible exchange that we benefit both from our experience. The experience in the Caribbean is very high on when, when it's hurricane based. Uh, we don't have actually hurricanes, but we have volcans, we have volcanoes, uh, land, landslides, we have floods, we have uh, earthquakes. So you name it, Italy has it. 
uh, in, uh, in let's say in a negative way. Uh, so we are studying and we have this uh, institution which is called Protezione Civile, Civil Protection Institution, uh, which has invented, let's say, I would say invented, but it's, it's in the experience of that institution, uh, the way to coordinate all the efforts for each of the dramatic situation we're living. So if it's an earthquake, put together all the forces we have to prevent to help the people in the case of an earthquake, Vulcans in the case of, a, of an eruption. So we're trying to call whenever dramatic issue is, is on stake, uh, all the forces together in the same table. Uh, you know, you have uh, Carabinieri, police, Guardia di Finanza, finance, um, and uh, a group of people that whenever a dramatic issue happens, uh, try to give their help. And the invention there was to get those that are called volunteers to be put on track and to be used in the best way possible. Because um, what happened um, years ago, uh, everybody wanted to volunteer to get uh, the people under the earthquakes uh, houses, damaged by the houses, to get them out. But they didn't know how to. Okay. So they need to have the expertise of the people and say, you have to do that. And that's why the coordination issue became very important. So mm -hmm. the, the um, civil protection is another sector, another issue we want to work together. You have SDIMA in Barbados and you have also some other um, connected offices throughout the Caribbean. So we would like to, um, to work with them together. So we're going to speak now a bit to the whole issue of sargasm yeah. and what has been happening across the region. It's not only within the Caribbean region, but we're going to focus on the Caribbean region. Sure. And you being here and you, you're listening and you may have been watching from the outside as to some of the impacts that the sargasm have been having on, well, some the tourism industry, the fishing industry, and so um, How significant is this conference in terms of bringing the stakeholders together to find a common solution and using the sargasm impact on the shorelines and so as a means of finding a solution to make it economically viable? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me say that life is uh, a learning journey throughout all the times of a human life. So I'm here to learn, first of all, to learn how is it possible to put all the forces together and see if there is any kind of solutions. You can't have one solutions for all. You have many circumstances, many different ways to treat the sargassum issue. But what is certain is that you should have a common rule on how to behave in the case of sargassum. Science and technology is very important because they show the way. I mean, there are people that say, scientists that say, sargassum is a resource that has to be kept as it is because gives lies to uh, fishing stocks uh, and the bio environment has to be kept in this way. Uh, other scientists say you have to get the sargassum where it's created, so in the high seas. And others say you have to collect it when it reaches the, the, shore. the shore. Well, we have to study all these and to put all the points together because you have to know where you have to collect, where you have to transport, and how the market could behave in the presence of this disponibility. So it's clear that you will have to work on a private and public partnership. partnership. You have to have common rules because if you behave in a certain way in St. Vincent and then in, a, in a way, an opposite way, I don't know, in St. Lucia, 
uh, first of all, you don't make a single effort. And then secondly, you would collect less quantity of sargasso. So it needs to be uh, addressed uh, on, uh, on different actors. And the most important ones are the public and the private. Then science has to suggest how to do and uh, where to go. Uh, and uh, it's nothing, nothing is possible to do it from today to tomorrow. Uh, you have to follow uh, a path and then uh, let's see how it works. There are some examples here in the, in the conference of people uh, that have used sargassum to uh, transform it into oil for uh, the cosmetic industry, um, for uh, the uh, feeding plants. Um, so there are many applications and biogas, obviously, and biofuel and, uh, and uh, material for construction sites. Uh, so there is lot, lots of things to do, uh, but the most important thing is to, uh, to, to know how to collect and where to collect all this uh, sargassum algae and where to put it. Uh, you can't have an investment from a private sector if you have a different rule in each of the countries. So uh, I believe that, that that's an issue that has to be addressed with all the countries on a regional way on the international organizations like maybe CARICOM. So how important would you say it is to come to a common solution among the member states and taking that risk of making an investment into some sort of final product that will be beneficial to all? But I think the key, the key here is for taking that risk, making that investment, and the importance of the funding agencies mm -hmm. buying into the proposed projects? Yes. Well, there is always a risk on a private endeavor, on a private action. And the private moves mostly because of the revenues, how much time you get the revenues, how much higher is the revenues from the investments, so this is like a financial construction, right, for the private sector. Uh, you have also, well, and then the private sector will move easily, more easy than doing it by itself, if the public sector helps. Right. And in this case, I think that, uh, well, for instance, Italy has few fundings uh, for uh, projects on uh, environmental sustainability. That means also sargassum, which is not all the amount given for sargassum, but if there is a project concerning sargassum, it could be financed. And we have uh, for that line of loans, 50 million euros, where part of it has been already used for projects in environmental um, development. Uh, so there are still uh, few uh, uh, monies to use for the gas. And then we have also, and that, that is uh, mm, based on a memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the CARICOM with the help, executive help of the CDB, which is the Caribbean Development Bank. Uh, so it's very important, all this triangulation, and it's very important the presence of international finance institutions because they have to build over the disponibility, financial disponibility the countries have, how to employ all this finance for those projects. Okay. And for you, per se, in terms of overseeing and observing here at the conference, what would you like to see as an outcome? I would like to see uh, that there is. Uh, building up a consciousness of a common endeavor for the countries of the Caribbean. Um, we have to have less interlocutors than many countries. 
Otherwise, it would be very difficult to employ those funds for actions made in one country than the other. They will be different. We should have a security that grants the objectives to the private sector. They will come if they see that each of those countries behave the same way. Otherwise, they will say very difficult to collect in the same pattern uh, the sargasso men have the same quality of the algae in each country. That's a little bit, I think, something that has to overcome, to be overcome. And uh, I would like to see in the conference an action plan for the future using all European Union and international financement to be employed for the Sagasu, which is a global issue, which is not just for the Caribbean. So if there is a pilot project that, has, that is successful for the Caribbean, it will be successful also for other countries like in the Pacific, for example, for instance. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jose. We're speaking here with Alberto Vani da Carafi. He is a special envoy for Caribbean countries from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation in Italy. He is in Grenada as part of a delegation at the second EU Caribbean Global Gateway Conference on Sagasm. We thank you again very much for sharing with us. Thank you. Until next time, I am Sharia Noel. Thanking you so much for viewing.